Hey there, I'm Lee Ullman here with some big news from the National Young Farmers Coalition. We're partnering with Heritage Radio Network on a special season of The Farm Report. It's all about what's happening with the Farm Bill and how it impacts farmers and eaters. I am growing diversified vegetables on land that's been in our family for 150 years. And so with the pandemic, gentrification, property values going up, we had to sell the land and we lost it. Join us as we uncover the untold stories behind this massive piece of legislation that shapes how we grow our food, what we eat, and so much more. The problems we have had, those are things that come from earlier Farm Bill and USDA policy, right? Like Earl Butts, get big or get out. You know, it's my responsibility to know not only what I'm eating, but then like how, how that all came to be and realize like, wow, like this piece of legislation, all this money, like it's technically something that I support as a taxpayer. While Congress debates the next Farm Bill, this is not just an invitation to listen. It's a call to action. Be part of the conversation. Subscribe to the Farm Report on Heritage Radio Network wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Brandon Hoy, co-owner of Roberta's, a super duper awesome place. Roberta's is a very, 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 very proud sponsor of the Heritage Radio Network. We're also super awesome. Thank you, Heritage. Broadcasting live from Bushwick, Brooklyn, you're listening to HeritageRadioNetwork.org. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America, from border to border, coast to coast, and all the ships at sea. Streaming live from the County of Kings, Brooklyn, New York City, on the Heritage Radio Network. Are you ready for the fastest half hour on the internet today? It's the Mike and Judy Show. Spanning the globe for high-minded hijinks and low-brow kicks to bring you the best in sex, drugs, rock and roll, and nuclear fission. They're too bad for radio and too good-looking for television. And now, here they are. The Nichols and May of the Now Generation, your hosts, Mike Edison and Judy McGuire. Happy New Year, Mike. I can't hear you, Is Mike. Hey, Hey, Judy, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. There you go. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, I can't believe I'm the only Jew in this room. How the fuck did that happen? I mean, it's like the model UN here, but I'm the only kike. <laughs> <laughs> and for those on Radio Land, and speaking of, of Jews, Judy's got a mouthful of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Your delicious, very favorite pizza. Our delicious pizza from Roberta's. It's my favorite. It's my favorite of all theirs. So here we go. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about Jews. Jews. We're going to talk about... <laughs> for a change. Um, Amanda Palmer. Fuck her. Uh... We're gonna and we're gonna meet. We're gonna meet the girl to gorilla. We're gonna talk about we're New York. Meet rock my and boyfriend's roll. band. Oh my god, your boyfriend is here. Oh my, my god. Oh my god. Here. Oh my god. He's gonna tell you all the secrets you've always wanted to know about. I, I me. can't wait. Um, yes, he's a good-looking fellow. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you buy him? <laughs> I bought him on Nerve.com, actually. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you introduce our guests, and then we're going to do a little Rosh Hashanah thing. We're going to have some apples and honey for a sweet new year, a nice Jewish tradition, and then we're going to get ugly. Okay. First, we have John Paul Skosik. Hello. Singer, guitar player, one of the founding members of Girls Who Grill. Then we have Steve Killapang. <laughs> Hi, Judy. Hi, Steve. You might know Steve from Auto Shrunken Head, where he's one of the owners, and um, he's a great drummer and play, has played in a million bands. And then there's my sexy lover man, the weakness for the Greekness, That'd be me. Spiro Panasopoulos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't want to peek at the Greek. <laughs> so I've heard. He's got a sexy voice on today. I usually only hear him uh, talking to other women on the phone with that voice. Yes, hello. <laughs> I'm like, who is that? That's a woman you're talking oh, to. Oh, man. This is going to be a good show. I can feel it now. The sexual tension is building. <laughs> Costanza's parents but, but first, are here. First, first, let's do the apples and honeys. You know, this is a nice tradition I wanted to share with everybody. You... Non- this is a Jewish goys, You fucking goys. Yeah. Apples and honey. It's uh, Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and it's just for a sweet New Year. That's it. No other agenda. I'm not trying to convert you guys or anything. Jews are anti-conversion, aren't Yeah, they? well, we're not really... It's not an evangelical religion, you know? I mean, you can convert, but we kind of make it hard. Yeah, you have to ask three you times. Jump I through, saw that Jump through fucking city. hoops. It's not like, you know, Christians will sign pretty much anybody up. Like American Idol? 
Um, Let's mm. taste this delicious. And, and one thing about Jews, too, we don't, generally don't storm NBCs when you make fun of us. Mm. <laughs> I'm feeling like a stereotype. Nice. I can imagine. This is a delicious brown... I think we let the apple sit a little long, but... Does that mic work yet, no, Mike? No, I got this mic's off. Um, well, Mike will figure out the mic in some, some I have level. no idea why it's not working. <coughs> ah, okay. I get paid to like fix that, but I don't know why it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> right. Joe gets paid in pizza. That's why it's not working. Well, anyway, he wants uh, toppings. Like, we negotiated hardball <laughs> for toppings. <laughs> we used to only get plain pizza. From, from well, We talked to corporate. We talked to radio. corporate, <laughs> and our raise is a, a, the occasional toppings. topping. We get toppings. So today, also out here at Roberta's, is the Tiki, tiki Disco Party, which is like... <sighs> the apocalypse came early this year. It feels like every we're, time they do this fucking thing. We're too old for Tiki Disco, but also, <laughs> but, the lack of Tiki upsets me. And luckily, yeah, we, we have a Tiki expert here. We have here. a true Tiki master in the house. Because when you think of Disco, you think of Tiki. Well, I mean, you took you took a look at the backyard. I did. Did you see anything Tiki about it? Um, Maybe something that can be set on fire. <laughs> well, tiki is a very flammable genre. Yeah. Do you have all any that thatched d- roofs and <laughs> bamboo? But they're all about like reclaimed here. Do you have any tiki tips for Brandon and them at Roberta's? Um, they could probably get a bedpan full of rum. Some, yeah, some <laughs> rum would be good, and then they could set fire to what they have outside, and then put a, a real tiki bar in there. Well, that's good. Yeah. You guys, yeah. Otto, how long has Otto's been open? No. Um, this October twentieth will be our tenth. Anniversary. Fucking A, right? Wow. And that's in a business that has a very short life expectancy, so yeah. Mazel Tov, Steve. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> I know my life expectancy has been shortened. <laughs> and you don't even drink. Yes. Does that make it easier or harder to own a bar? Uh, it definitely makes it easier. Do you do you find your um not drinking reinforced by watching <laughs> drunken shenanigans? Um, no, because I kind of grew up with drunken shenanigans. So, Dude, I've been uh, in that bar, and it makes me want to go sober. <laughs> <laughs> but they do have great glasses, great tiki I, I love drinks. The, I love the all wasabi glasses, I do. And they're running a contest right now to see who can design their t-shirt. Right now, you can get on to Otto's Facebook page and figure out if you have the art chops to design the next Otto's t-shirt, correct? That's correct. Now, so Otto's has a Facebook page, but Steve is one of two people that I know that don't have a Facebook page. That's correct. I'm not on the book. I and you're not so. on the Twitter. I'm not on the Twitter. Yet you have a successful business, so I... <laughs> well, our, our business has a Facebook slash Twitter page thing tweet. <laughs> You're so modern. modern. You're so modern, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're really, you're really, you're really on the vanguard. I of the still have a rotary game. cell phone, so. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, girl to gorilla. What's what's what does it even mean, girl to gorilla? I mean, I like girls. And I like gorillas. Uh, the story in that order. The story starts with. Um, it wasn't always girl to gorilla. It used to be we, we, me and John started uh, as the Merkins. But that was a totally different incarnation. It was a totally too. different incarnation. We also found out by watching PCU that there was already a band called the Merkins. Merkins. <laughs> yes, uh, that movie, that terrible movie. But um, girl to gorilla. It was actually uh, we were looking for a name. We were. It was just me and John again. We had lost some members. We wanted to be a band again. And we're writing we were, new songs. Writing new songs. And uh, I was at Coney Island, and I was hanging out with Todd Robbins. And Todd Robbins explained to me this excellent trick where you put a girl behind smoked glass and then you shift the mirrors and the girl turns into a gorilla and then she runs out and uh, scares the fuck out of everybody in the, the place into the next, uh, you know, into the next carnival act. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And I said, uh, and he told me it was in, in some James Bond movie at one point. Or Diamonds another. are forever. Right, it's- right. Roger Moore's favorite James Bond movie. And I was like, that's just very cool. I go, what's it called? He goes, Girl to Gorilla. And I was like, well, that's pretty damn cool. <laughs> so, uh, Well, at that point, we had gone through so many names yeah. <laughs> and ideas. And every time, you know, every other Thursday, we were like, oh, that's not good. And I just said, I don't care anymore. I said, Spiro, Ma'am. think of something. And if it's good, it's fine, whatever it is. And he said, well, Girl to Gorilla. And I said, let's run with it. Well, naming a band is always the most fun, right? It's like always, but also part of the most pro- problematic bit of the whole thing. I mean, to settle on something that you have to live with for was, a long yeah, time? It wasn't fun at all, actually. I now have a slew, a <clears throat> list of different names that I think I oh, would even prefer. Oh, I, I could do a book. <laughs> I, could do, I could do a whole book. You know, we could start with my Steve Miller cover bands. I've got Jungle Love, for instance. Um, you know, I was in the, in the Ron Chans for, for many years. Probably the worst fucking name of all time. First of all... I disagree. Oh, I you know, First of all, it sounds like a gay porn movie. The Ron The Chans. Ron Chans, Ron right? Chans. And the, it doesn't... It's a pun, and I fucking hate puns and band names. It doesn't translate to any other language... 
we spent a lot of time touring Europe. Primarily, we toured Europe, and every day someone would say, "What means ranch?" Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does ranch and ranch. It just doesn't translate. Sure, you know, you gay porn fans get it. <laughs> um, yeah, that was not good. <laughs> well, since, since we have musicians on, and you're a musician, and I'm just musicians. I'm just a singer. Oh. Um, <laughs> You'd like to share your instrument with us? I'm not going to share the instrument today because I had some dairy, and that makes me a little phlegmy, oh so God. I won't yeah. sing with you. Fucking diva. Sp- Spiro has heard me sing so many times, and he saw you the... lucky, lucky man. He saw that, he saw that um, Mabel, the cat, the departed cat, would come running from wherever she was hidden whenever I would sing. And sit, you know, and trying to climb into my mouth. But anyway, so Dude, what? Stop I w- her. Are we doing a Whitney no. Houston? Are we going to do a Whitney Houston special soon? I hope so. How come it's Houston Street, but it's Whitney Houston? Because she's from Jersey. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so we're going to talk. I, I just wanted to get a feeling from musicians about the Amanda Palmer debacle. On Fuck one, her. On one hand, <laughs> musicians play for free all the time. On the other hand, this is someone who's built a career on like artists helping artists. She she got um, over a million bucks off Facebook. I argued with this horrible c word the other night. At this Whoa. point, communist. Um, <laughs> she she felt that Amanda was completely justified. I feel like she's she's asking skilled musicians. It's not like when I danced with Michael Clark, being a spaz, having a new experience. She's asking skilled musicians who make their living. Playing music to come play for free. For when the you chance. dance with Michael Clark, being an amateur, an untrained, untrained dancer is part of the whole operation, right? It's sort of looking yeah. for outsiders to come part of it and to gel. And the and part of the process is the art, the art, right? And yeah. the process are hand in hand. You know, first of all, you know I'm not a Kickstarter fan. I think it's just panhandling. You know, it's bullshit. You know, you, you find a way to finance your own projects. I mean, it's sort of the way I was brought up and just holding out your hand. You know, on the other hand, you know, just to work, you know, both sides of the argument, I get it. Sometimes it gives something in return to your fans to try to complete yeah. a record. But this girl raised a million... Over two, a million. One, one point two million dollars is a lot of fucking money. You can't make a record like that? What are you, Fleetwood fucking Mac? Is this well, 1978? What about all the money that she got from doing that role in The Fisher King? That was fantastic. Oh, God. <laughs> Zing. But that's a lot of fucking money. And you, can, you can't get this rolling for that? I don't understand. But even if you don't make them, even if you, even if putting that money aside, she's playing places like Webster Hall where there is admission. I mean, can't she give them 30 bucks each? That seems like... The, the amount of damage she did to herself, not paying musicians, so outweighs what she saved in, uh, in basically in, 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 in PR and just bad press. I mean, she's, I mean this is the, this, this is the best, biggest knucklehead move I've ever heard in my life. And the guys know me. I'm, I, I look at everything from a business standpoint. That was the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my but, life. Uh, not to play devil's advocate, but Yo, please what, do. About, what about the musicians who actually did volunteer, in fact? You know, the, you know what about them? They did it for a reason. That's, there but, but there isn't a the problem. Reason? For their resume, they can be maybe sessions musicians or touring musicians. Oh, some resume. Not much barrier yeah. to entry to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I did show up with your child. Well, look, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, I don't agree with it at all. I think it's... You but, can put Mike and Judy show on your resume. Look, I will. Look, yeah, I will. <laughs> You're one of the elite. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> we were we were actually talking about this yesterday, and we said, "Look, if Bruce Springsteen put out a, a call and said, hey, listen, we'd like you to pay for us for free, there'd be a line outside the uh, outside the you know around the corner of people wanting to play with Springsteen for free. There's nothing wrong with wanting to play with somebody that you like, right? And then being able to, to do so. Yeah, but right? Judy's point is well taken. She's asking for string players. Yeah, she's not asking for she's people to join them to be like some gang band choir of background vocals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You right. know, or like what Judy did, you know, which is you know the experience added value to. To my life. To your life. <laughs> Such as it is. Really. So she's just trying to she's just trying to cheap out can, on paying musicians. Can I story. Ask a, a topical question. What has she done? I, I actually am not really <laughs> yeah, familiar with her. I don't know where this bitch is either. Yeah. She was in the <laughs> okay, Dresden enough dolls. with the B word. <laughs> okay. oh, man. She was in the Dresden dolls. She you know, she married the Neil Gaiman, so she's famous. Oh by now he I know. <laughs> okay, yeah. she was she yeah. was famous. She has a really rapid fan base. She had that long before. She just married Neil last year, but I mean, she does have people who love her and who want to play with there her. There are people I just, who are dropping ten thousand dollars to her Kickstarter. Right uh, for fund. for one point two million dollars, hire a PR person. Thank you. I know. Yeah. Apparently, she's got the same person as running the Romney campaign. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, so I, she, I don't necessarily have a problem with her saying, "Hey, if you want to come up on stage and play some songs with us, um, you know, do so. Mm-hmm. You know, just come by and learn the songs, and then we'll play." But 
the way she, you know, she's her response to the whole open letter thing is like, oh, you know, I support buskers, like because you dropped a few dollars on somebody's guitar case on, you know, the boardwalk gives you, you know, the right to ask for people to play for free. No, it's. It's just bad PR. No, yeah. the I can't afford a string section thing just does not fucking fly when yeah, you raise no. that kind of money. Especially I go to see the, the show in a fucking today. nightclub and they have a string section. And I'm sorry. Our we have a string st- section. I, yeah, yeah, we, had, we do have a we string have section. Strings. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> All on one <laughs> instrument. Okay, but uh, does he, uh, our string section, is str- our string player is so in demand right now that they won't work for cheap? I mean, seriously, are they so like? Oh, I listen. She'll have no trouble getting people. It's just, I know. it's just. Um, but but when you're asking someone precedent. to come in and re- it's, you're also, you know, fuck not getting paid for the gig. You should get paid to rehearse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, that's when on that level you get paid for rehearsal. No, I, I look. I I think that what she did was fine in up to the point where it's it's just a bad perception. He's like, okay. She's got a million point two dollars. She can't afford the thirty thousand dollars that she says that would cost her to hire a string section full time. I mean, thirty thousand dollars. I mean, how many tickets does she sell? Sell? You know, she could charge an extra dollar and probably pay for the band. All right, yeah. it doesn't cost thirty five thousand dollars for a string section well, per that's night. That's she, no, no, not per night to take on tour. Oh, that's okay. Out of, you know, that's this whatever what budget said. and how many gigs is that? I mean, do the math. Yeah. If it's hey, if it's thirty five gigs, it's only a thousand dollars a night. Yeah, you know, right. if that's the show she wants to put on. Add a dollar suck a it up. You know, a lot of people lose yeah. money out on the road. She's making money on the merch. I mean, the business has changed. Yeah, the merch is so well. much. And you know, if she's making ten thousand to, to God knows what fifty thousand dollars a night, you know, just off the door in the guarantee. Certainly, she can pay a string section right. at union rates and get <clears throat> qualified, you know, excellent people, which is New York is, is full of, to come and rehearse properly and put on a show. Ultimately, her responsibility is to the audience. Right. Well, her problem is is the perception when when people are throwing millions of dollars your way and you tell them you, you're you're asking for free help it, it leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. Well, she offers the hugs and beer in return and yeah, some merch. I've got beer. hugs and beer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, on that note, <laughs> let's play some free music, Girl the Gorilla. Are you going to play my favorite well, song? Well, you first. Wait, you're getting exactly what you'd get playing with Amanda for doing this game. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza and beer and Judy will hug you. Yeah. And, and Spiro maybe. And I mean, Spiro. speaking of bad PR, he runs our PR. We're, we're actually getting do. more cuz she's not giving <clears throat> pizza away. That's true. We give pizza. All and right. I was, you know, Steven Spiro don't drink, but you Watch on a beer, so there you go. We did all right. They did all right. I like Modelo. <laughs> I well, like Modelo. What are you, okay, what what are you gonna play? <laughs> We're gonna do uh, as as per your request, Judy. Your your favorite song that that. Um, unfortunately, there's another, I guess, more widely known version of it by a British dead woman. Um, you know, to be frank, but uh, we're gonna play uh, Rehab. Yeah, not the Amy Winehouse. Not version. the Amy Winehouse version. This is the Girl to Gorilla. Right. Had to go to rehab. I wanna be a better man. I gotta change the way I think, but I want another drink. And I don't want to understand why I should be in rehab Cause my life is just a lie With all the alcohol and coke and all the cigarettes that I smoke Even Jesus had to die But step by step I'm gonna make it through When I get out the first rounds on you are oh, hell I guess it's back to rehab again I got out of rehab Thought that I'd get by I'd go to AA every week When it was my time to speak I was thinking about getting high I got out of rehab But I didn't get too far I thought I'd be fine with a sip of dinner wine Now I'm snorting shivers at the bar, yeah Step by step Wait and see, and if I don't, your next one's on me, or oh, hell. I guess it's back to rehab again. I've been in and out of rehab. I tried to do what they say, 
And I remember getting shakes and terrible stomach aches But right now I confess I'm feeling okay Cause now I'm out of rehab But I'm sure I'm gonna be there soon Cause when I'm done with all these jokes I'm gonna smoke a couple tokes And I'll be outside howling at the moon Yeah, step by step I'm gonna make my way back When I get out I'm gonna smoke all of the crack in the world Don't I go to rehab ever again No, no, that's why I gotta get to rehab Yeah, yeah, but I don't wanna go to rehab No, no, that means I better get to Gotta get to rehab I wanna go to rehab And better get to rehab All right, girl to gorilla I don't feel so good And without your viola player bass Well, I wanted Spiro to do human beatbox bass But he wouldn't do it Oh so this is so exciting, though, Judy, to have your boyfriend here. I, I, this is Do you have any questions oh, for him? Oh, I got to oh, ask Sarah Lee some questions. His mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Judy asked my mom, where'd you go wrong with Michael? She made Love great cakes. Cake. <laughs> Love cakes. Love cakes. Oh, you know, cake. never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I've never heard Judy, Judy, Judy. No, well, Judy, you know, you're, don't make us you're famous for writing yeah, a seriously. book called How Not to Date. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know, you met uh, Spiro on the internet, and it stuck. I know, it stuck. It can happen. She wrote it after she met Spiro. Hey, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Oh, we're getting kisses. <laughs> uh, well, for those of you in Radio <laughs> Land, public. Um, who can't see us, we're sitting in the radio station behind Roberto's with a big uh, glass window. It's kind of like being in the fishbowl here, and it's pretty easy to spot the awkward dates. And we can watch <laughs> all the people picking their noses. But we don't have any awkward... We haven't had any awkward dates this well, week. Well, this would be a real awkward date. I mean, Yeah, they're I, not on a date. No, they're I just, don't think so. <laughs> they've read about it in the show. <laughs> I can exactly. always spot, though, when I'm in a restaurant, the internet date. You can, you can see it yeah. from a mile away. It's so uncomfortable. It's palpable. Like when Spiro and I had our, our first date, he brought all his friends along. I didn't do that. But you I did? did I positioned all my friends, I positioned the date at places where all my friends already were. And, and why, why would you do such a thing? What is this some because sort of I knew she was a dating columnist, and if she wrote anything, I wanted witnesses to the contrary. I was writing for. I was writing the column for New York Press. That's, 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 that's like something I thought good. I was just a column. I didn't think I was a date. Wow, date paranoia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would be paranoid too. Yeah. Dating a dating columnist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what's what's up with that TV show that we, that we both reviled? I can't even remember what it's called about the uh, sex columnist, the dating columnist. What was oh, that was fucking awful sex Bravo in the show? City. No, not <laughs> Sex in the City. The oh, Miss Advice. Jeez Louise. <laughs> and, and I think you know the idea is, oh, I'm going to go out with a sex columnist. That's going to be good. Yeah. No, well, I mean, it, it's nerve wracking. It is. The first date was nerve wracking because I'm sitting there trying to be on my best behavior, not knowing what maybe my best behavior is totally not what this columnist wants. I wore my lucky shirt on that date, but he watched. He watched a couple of misadvised with me and said this is the show where horrible people do horrible things yeah <laughs> that would be mostly all of the bravo yes. programming this is, uh, at this uh, point the formula for all reality <laughs> tv shows seriously <laughs> um, but yeah so but yeah it worked out and what's the secret to your success um, tolerance <laughs> valium <laughs> that's good well steve you got married pretty recently to uh, a very good friend of mine Fabulous yeah. Levon, now that yes. I'm very Levon. in awe of both of you. You're two of my favorite people. Thank and, you, thank you. And uh, and a very fun wedding. And a super fun wedding. And um, wow, and and both rock and rollers. How does that work? I mean, you're uh, both slightly out of your fucking minds. I mean, you do realize that. Yes, that's that's okay. She sings, I play the drums, so we drown each other out. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you play in the same band. Uh, off and on frequently. Yes, the Vondells. Uh, the Vondells. And how does that work? I've never uh, actually played music with someone I was romantically attached to or involved with. It's good. <laughs> it's fun. Do you ever yell at each other? Um, we wait till Steve. after rehearsal. It's not like Fleetwood Mac? We don't do it in front of the kids, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> so your whole band is taken except for Simon, who's not here, who's a really cute Canadian youngster. <laughs> so does he get all your groupie tail? Uh, yeah, pretty much. We try. I mean, we try. We, we try. You know, it's, we push the groupie tail at Simon, whether Simon or, 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 or 
gets it or not is. I guess know. it could be overwhelming since he's. Yeah. You do push it yeah. on him. And you guys have so many groupies. I've been to your game. Oh, very, oh, yeah, very, very good. Mm-hmm. They well, are good these, looking. They're very, like, these aren't the vagina dryers. No. You know. <laughs> they're not like Rush or ELP. <laughs> or. <laughs> so you guys going to see Motorhead in Paris? I understand you guys are going on. Uh, we're going to miss it by one day, right? No, we're not. Well, we're getting in that day. I'm still trying to decide we're if we'll try. have. I I, we'd like you know, the Spiro and Judy uh, French tour. The French Tour Diary. French, it's not so romantic, Spiro. <laughs> oh, this is how romantic it was. That's it was Judy going, sound. do you want to go to Paris? Or, uh? <laughs> well, before you go, make sure you watch Phantom of the Opera, the Lon Chaney version, oh, to get, get in the proper mood. Okay. We're going to go to the... Um, and the, the Hunchback. And the Hunchback, yeah. This, this, you know, there you go. We're going to go where the skulls are. What's it called? Euro Disney. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to fucking Euro Disney. Auschwitz? That's not in Oh, yeah. No, the, uh, c- the catacombs. We're going to go to the yeah, catacombs. The catacombs are fucking creepy. And you walk out of there with, like, death dust on you. Ew. I mean, it, it's pretty fucking heavy. Check out the uh, the cemetery, too, uh, oh, where yeah. um, Oscar Wilde is and... Uh, Every, everybody, everybody, almost, everybody, yeah. basically. We're gonna do the goth tour. Yeah, cool. yeah, absolutely. Oh, maybe you'll see Amanda Palmer on that tour. Yeah, I, maybe. I, I hear she's goth. And maybe her good friend. Oh, did I mention? Oh, I <laughs> did I mention? Fuck her. I'm still, I'm pissed. I'm still thinking about this now. A million point two dollars, and that's not enough money to like make a record and tour support. That's, well, that's, that's, that's crazy. I, I tell you what, if she needs tour support, hire a girl to Gorilla. We'll yeah, I know. Seriously, all right, like for, and, for and, re- and we'll pay our musicians. Yeah, for real. <laughs> we've been playing bands and with varying degrees of success over the last you know twenty or thirty years. I'm playing since for thirty like fucking years, year and a half, two years. I don't know what you're talking. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but you know, we keep doing it. We you know, I've had some some moderate success. I've been able to travel. I've been you know around the world a little bit. And why the fuck do we still do it? Because we love it, we love it. That's yeah. uh, the, the world, very obvious. You got to do it. It's a passion. You know, I got. I have people in my life that that play golf every weekend or, or do whatever they do every weekend that I find ridiculous. You know, and they they look at me Mastermind and say, eight yeah. Times a day. "Yeah, I like golf." They go boating. The, the whatever. fact is, is that like for me, writing a song is compulsory. I can't yeah. help not writing a song. It just something comes to me. You have to get it down. You put it to music, and then you bring it into the guys. I mean, we have. You know, it has to happen. If it doesn't happen, then there's so- really something wrong with me. I Personally, think. I hate writing songs. I find it a distinct pain in the ass. I like <laughs> writing marketing copy about um, soft soaps. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, I, but I am a slave to the riff. You know? I could do I, that. I'm a slave but to the riff. It's the it's the creative process. I mean, seriously, you don't you don't grow without being creative. You know, I'm sorry. I don't think you do. I don't think that if, if you if you if you get rid of every creative outlet in your in your life, then, then you're just stagnating. And, and that's how you you do grow is by using your brain and. That, that that manner. But we, okay, so we're uh, we're almost out of time because this is the quickest half hour on the internet today. But I wanted to, to you to guys to mention where we can find you if we want to hear more of your tunes. You could find us on iTunes. You could find us on CD Baby. You could find us on Spotify. We are now on Spotify. On Spotify. Ooh. We're on Napster. We're on Amazon.com. Mm-hmm. Our our uh, debut album album Super Deluxe Custom Experience uh, is available in all those outlets. Um, and where can the girls come to show you their tits? They can come and show us their tits at uh, specifically uh, at the Legion Bar this uh, Thursday, seven ninety Metropolitan Avenue. Uh, we're playing every Thursday in September there, uh, about what ten thirty, ten thirty ish. It's a free show. Um, Lots of other great players. Um, Absolutely, yeah. We've you already... got any cello players coming for free? <laughs> um, actually, yes. yes, we do. There's going to every... be a ch- there's going to be a cello player who's not going to be there for free, but she will be performing with uh, our friend Brian Gruner last night, uh, as well as Sheena Bazaar's uh, band, Cat um, Lady Sheena. Yep, yep. Uh, as well as I'm trying to think, uh, there's going to be quite a few different players. Uh, Box to Puss going to play. Box to Puss is a Box to Puss, which is Lynn Vaughn's other Lynn project. other project, and still my favorite singer in New York, by the way. Yep, yep. Yeah. So Mike. Mike, you played with us a couple weeks ago. It was ago. great. No, and, it's, it's a great game. You guys, Ford. you guys were uh, fantastic. Absolutely. And, and right across the street from White Castle. And White yeah. across the oh, street. Oh, and the Dexter Dreams. That's oh, actually and I saw today in the New York Post that Shirley MacLaine loves White Castle. That's, <laughs> that's uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. Which, like, which, so well, like we needed Castle. another reason to another, love White like, Castle. One more completely insane person to chime in. Oh, maybe... It wasn't... Uh, what did I just say? I'm sure, Shirley, <laughs> Shirley MacLaine? <laughs> no, it's yeah. like Laverne and Shirley. Like that, that oh, one. and just quickly, we're <laughs> also going to do a, uh, Marshall. a quick guest spot for uh, Steve's birthday this week uh, at Otto's. It's okay. Saturday the 22nd. Mm-hmm. 
So we're gonna appear somewhere that would be in that. Otto's head. Yeah, Otto's Shrunkenhead on Fourteenth yeah. Street. The uh, greatest Absolutely. tiki bar. Remember the Hawaii Kai? You were a Hawaii Kai yeah. fan back in the day. Yeah, love the Hawaii Kai. Love the, I used Hawaii to like Kai. going to Trader Vic's too. To, like, oh, Trader Vic's yep. was great because you could you, you could go yes. through the Ramones in Central Park and go pee at Trader Vic's. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> at the plaza. Man, invar- invariably, someone would jump in the date. fountain after Trader Vic's. Man, <laughs> they drink one of those giant like bed pans full of rum with like you know a drink for four people, but there are only two of us. So delicious. Danger zone. Anyway, so what are we going to hear for our outro, you um, guys? We're going to do uh, a song that's going to be on our new album. By the way, we're thinking about like doing a promotion for the uh, the new album, trying to find a title for it. If yeah. you guys raise a million dollars on Kickstarter, be... you can come back to the Mike and Judy well, show. Well, no, basically, yeah. you're gonna, we're going to do a little promotion where you're going to be able to name our album, and we're going to pick one, and we're going to give you some kind of a prize that will have to do with alcohol, I guess. Beer and hugs. Yes. Beer and hugs. Beer and hugs. <laughs> hugs. Which I think I, I want to nominate for the name of our new record. Beer and yeah. hugs. Beer and hugs. hugs. That's okay. what Amanda Palmer should call her new piece of shit. Anyway, this is going to be a song that's featured on the new album. It's a it's a newer song. It's called uh, Keys on the Counter. All right, it's Girl to Girl here on the Mike and Judy Show. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to Joe the Engineer at Roberta's and the Heritage Radio Network. See you guys next week. Leave your keys on the counter, the bag's on the floor. Look on a face I've seen before It's another waste of time It's another waste of time And now a foot's in a mouth My heart's on my sleeve There's nothing left to say But still she won't leave It's another waste of time Yeah, it's another waste of time Every step she ever took with me to get this far It's just another reason I stayed late at the bar Now every dinner that I bought, every dance that we shared Even when we fought, I guess she never cared It was all a waste of time Yeah, it was all a waste of time Every second, every minute, every hour of the day That's another reason why she had to go away So leave your keys on the counter, I'll hold the door Forget about goodbye, I can't take any more Cause it's all a waste of time Yeah, this was all a waste of time She was just another waste of time Thanks for listening to this program on HeritageRadioNetwork.org. You can find all of our archived programs on our website or as podcasts in the iTunes store by searching Heritage Radio Network. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Heritage underscore Radio. You can email us questions at any time at info at HeritageRadioNetwork.org. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization. To donate and become a member, visit our website today. Thanks for listening.